when I look at our students, I see leadership. I look at my students' faces, I see growth on a daily basis. When I look at my students, I see community. I see optimism. I see inquisitiveness. I see excitement. I see so much potential. Passion. Dedication. Spirit. Creativity. Tradition. Love. There is such beauty in who these kids are and where they come from and what they want life to be. And when you talk to them and when you listen to them, when you go on retreat with them and they open up their hearts and they say, here's who I want to be and here's what's tough about life and here's what's great about life, you just hear this incredible story of people of hope who, who want to be a part of this community. It's a community that once you're a part of, it'll always be a part of you. You know, um, and it's something special that only Loyola has. And I, I really, really love that. Loyola Academy is more than education. They're open to me. They listen to what I have to say. Like, I'm not just another person. I'm actually, you know, something special. That's what I've needed, and that's why I picked this school. Humans are motivated by several things, and one of them is to do a really good job at the things we're doing. And we keep being told in our society that we're motivated by money or by things or by privilege, but what we are really motivated by is finding a challenge and meet that challenge. And the British and their small ships defeated the great Spanish Armada. When a class of students come into Loyal Academy, they're coming in with all different types of abilities, skills, talents, and all different types of levels. We need to meet those students where they are and build on their strengths. When I'm challenged, I try and push through it, and like if I need extra help, I'll go see my teachers because they're always available. And like you have the writing lab and the math lab, and so like there's a lot of resources that will help you through like the challenges. You may have done some work with this last year, but this year we want to beef up that definition a little bit. Let's build on our foundation. When I'm challenged, I appreciate it because you know you can learn anything anywhere, honestly. But it depends on how you learn it and how they teach you. It shapes you. You know what you're capable of. The challenges in the classroom, the challenges on the fields, the challenges in co-curriculars are not to just teach lessons, you know, they're really to take that kid or that student to the next level, and it's an ongoing process. Loyal Academy is a college prep institution, so our goal is to ensure that our kids are prepared to leave Loyola and to go on to college. Obviously that's not our only goal, but it's one of our top goals of our school. 99% of our kids go on to a four-year institution. So when we teach a student biology, we are interested in the content, there's no doubt about that. But we're also interested in how they form as a student and how they approach difficult processes and difficult material. So when we look at a study of one-celled organisms, we also look at how does one of the one-celled organisms in our world, malaria, affect all the people of the world? Why have we not been touched by that effect directly? And what does it do to the economic and earning impact of the people who are touched by it? So a great teacher can balance all of that, the content, the human effect, and your growth as a student. ¿Qué representó? ¿Qué nos dice la obra de Picasso? Growth means we need to look at the world around us and not be above it, but be in it. The language is representative of how people relate to one another. It's all about cultures and connections.
aunque sepa los caminos, yo nunca llegaré a Córdoba. And it is through passion and love of culture and making those connections that language is born. Because we want to connect with people all over the world. The weight's changing. Angle. What I love about teaching is it allows me to share my passion with the students. I mean, I have to be an artist. I am an artist. Everything in my being is an art. And, and, you know, for me, it's just that authenticity of coming to the classroom and being able to share who I am, you know, down to my core. I'm constantly pushing them to, uh, to lose control of the situation, to, to go beyond a piece and ruin it before they can kind of find the answer. Lose the control, as they say. This is just beautiful. You can kind of keep so it's it's a real different process than they're used to in some of their academic classes, and I think seeing the students develop, seeing them connect to something in themselves that they didn't know they had before we started maybe drawing something or you know addressing a still life, and then see them losing themselves in the process a little, it's it's just uh, you know amazing. The books that we use for Latin One are online. They can then transport pages of the book into a note-taking app, and they can take notes directly on the book, which makes it so much easier than having two separate places to have to look. Now it's all integrated. And also, we use what's called iTunes U. So I push all of my materials and my posts out to students. So they will know every day what they need to have for class. I will send them worksheets. I will send them articles to read or uh, films that they need to view. And they can then watch those and then respond to them. Let's get started. Everyone pull out your iPads and open up the books page 342. It's important to embrace new ideas because the, the classes that we're teaching, the way we can reach students is only to the extent that we can reach students on a very personal level. The information that we're teaching them has to be real to them. So the technology is constantly evolving. It's happening faster than ever. It really is a very steep curve. You have to be open to this new growth because it's easy to get really far behind really fast. Hypotenuse is always going to be directly across from the right angles. Technology has not just improved my class, it's completely transformed the way the kids are learning. It's changing the way they interact with the material. So now they're coming in and instead of sitting there taking you know, copious notes and watching me teach, they're sitting in a small group answering questions and, and working on problems together talking to each other. That's really exciting. It's not about we're going to move through the material faster. We're getting a much richer experience on many levels. I'm spending a lot more of my day moving around the classroom, overhearing discussions between two students where they're interacting with the vocabulary, where they're interacting with the concepts, rather than just listening to me tell them the concepts. Now the students can be a community of learners. Academy is, is not shy about wanting to be the best and we want to be on the cutting edge so we make no bones about that and, and that's important to us. Uh, we want to be the best and we want to provide for our students. But the thing that always keeps us grounded and that always will keep us grounded is we are rooted in our Catholic beliefs. We're founded on our Christian values and that will always keep us humble. Our core mission is college preparatory education for young people, to be successful in college. There's so much more at stake here. We've been entrusted with these young people to partner with their parents on this great quest that is their lives. I want graduates of Loyola Academy to be reflective, compassionate, generous people 
who have learned how to listen to their heart and have some of the skills and the confidence to actually dare to listen for that voice of God. are involved in a variety of things, but really what holds all of those things together is the Jesuit mission. We take great pride in how we teach our students to look at the world differently. And when I say look at the world differently, I mean to see the world as having evidence of God all around them in the people they encounter and the way that they encounter people. I really think that's a hallmark of what Loyola is about. It is a place that takes very seriously all aspects of the growth of an individual. And may our hearts and our minds and our bodies be moved to action to become more and more today the people that God has created us to be. Loyola has presented so many opportunities to me that I would not have been able to receive anywhere else. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not Loyola has taught me so many values that I'm going to use later in life. It taught me so much about my faith, my family, my friends, how I interact with others that I may not know so well. It's got me to be a better person in general. I really feel like I have a better grasp on who I am as a person and where I want to be in the future. Service is ingrained in what we do. Our students have a lot of opportunities to get involved in service and we work in a variety of soup kitchens, people in elderly homes and uh, nursing centers, as well as working with individuals with disabilities. I think there are so many benefits uh, for our students as they participate in service. I can, I've seen them grow in so many ways. They start to realize that life is more than just accomplishing tasks within your own immediate view, but what you're doing is you're training for a bigger life and a bigger role in this society. You don't have to be around Loyola very long to discover that tradition is an important part of the life of the school. There's a, there's a great prayer in the Catholic tradition where, where God is described as beauty ever ancient, ever new. And what Augustine is trying to play with in that phrase is a notion that, that God is never changing and yet always new. And that's sort of how I think about tradition in a place like a school, a tradition in a place like Loyola Academy. There's something about it that never changes. There are some constants to what it means to be Loyola Academy, what it means to be a part of this, this Jesuit tradition, this Catholic tradition, this, this tradition of this school community and how it's lived out its purpose over all these years. When you look at Loyola, you see the Jesuit education, you see the great athletics, and just the great communities. Great, great people involved in the school. And Growing up, I mean, there's no question that I want to be a Rambler. Hey Michael, can we go to Sound 2A? Whoa, but if we're not constantly asking those questions about where the beauty ever ancient, ever new is popping up in new ways and challenging us in new ways, then our tradition's not going to survive. So the vibrancy of the tradition is fed by a creativity and an openness to change. Every day Loyola is making me a better person. I mean, through academics and extracurricular activities, I mean, Loyola has inspired me to use my talents and share them with the world and with the religious aspect, you know, for God. And through everything that we do at Loyola, it's striving to make their students better people. On the first day of school with freshmen, I always ask them this question, and it comes from a wonderful American poet named Mary Oliver. She concludes the poem simply with this question for the reader. What is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? This is a place to ask that question. 
This is a place to let that question rattle around in your heart. This is a place to let that question get tested. Never let go of it. What is it you want to do with this gift of your life? Thank you.